Hi there, I'm Blackbright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. And if it's the first time you're passing through, you either click the thumbs up or you click the thumbs down or you subscribe or you share. You can interact with existing subscribers and existing subscribers as usual. Thank you for your support and your loyalty. And um, today, um, what I'm, I'm actually going to read um, the topic today. It's quite eerie, quite controversial could be construed as a conspiracy theory for some but you either can put me on pause and go and get yourself a cup of tea a glass of wine or whatever it is because I'm not quite sure how long this is going to take I think it's very important that I share the information though big up to Rose Bush for the inspiration and I am going to put a few links below so it's about the ID 2020, the link between that, the link between the coronavirus and the link between medical martial law. OK, so it's a bit too heavy for me to try and ad lib. So I'm just going to read what I've extracted and I know it's going to make sense to you, um, even though sometimes as I was reading it, it didn't always make sense to me. Okay, so like I said, what I'm about to read has eerie connotations. It is important to share, and while many of you may not understand and its relationship with the coronavirus, I'm hoping I'll give you food for thought. Remember, the coronavirus didn't happen overnight. We have been primed for panic and fear via the swine flu, the bird flu, the contagion movie, and Italy lockdown and panic, which has caused panic buying. And people are actually so paranoid. Um, so one, coronavirus has been declared, an, okay, an excuse for ID 20, 2020. And my theory is that it's to make sure that everybody gets vaccinated. Okay, so the coronavirus declared as a pandemic, that's number one. Number two, the incubation period has increased from 10 days to, to 30 days. It will, it will need to be controlled and contained. This is the message that will be going out to every one of us. Medical martial law is being put in place in the USA to restrict movement, and it's already partially in place in Seattle. OK, what is ID 2020? It's a coordinated funding via Bill Gates for digital identity from birth to death of 1.1 billion people. It's not in place yet, not, not to cover everyone, but that is the aim. Claiming they are committed to improving lives through digital identity. ID 2020 stands for Digital Identity Alliance and digital identity to ensure everyone is accounted for when the vaccine is released. That is my theory. OK, so FEMA is on the alert. FEMA is the Federal Emergency Management Agency, an agency of the US Department of Homeland Security, initially created by Presidential Reorganization Plan 3 of 1978 and implemented by two executive orders on the 1st of April 1979. So what does it mean to be under medical martial law, which is what... Um, the video I saw and what, you know, once I saw that video, I started reading up on other things. And this is what they feel the Corona virus is preparing us for. OK, a medical martial law. So. During a state of public health emergency, the public health authority may exercise the following emergency powers over persons as necessary to address the public health emergency. One, to vaccinate persons as protection against infectious diseases and to prevent the spread of contagious and possibly contagious diseases. Two, vaccination may be performed by any qualified person to do so by the public health authority. Three, a vaccine, a vaccine to be administered must not be such as to reasonably likely to lead to serious harm to the affected individual. Four, 
to prevent the spread of contagious or possibly contagious disease, the public health authority may isolate or quarantine pursuant to section 604 persons who are unable or unwilling for reasons of health, religion or conscience to undergo vaccination pursuant to this section, which means if you say you're not going to have the vaccine, you're going to be forced into quarantine. So it's a case of rolling up your sleeves, taking up the shot, or they're going to lock you in a room, jail or detention centre. Where others, with others who have not also taken the shot, there'll be no freedom of choice. Consequences of breaching medical martial law are fines of about £1,000 a day. Well, it was $1,000 a day in America and 30 days in jail. So this is why digital ID is so important. They don't want to miss anyone. That's my theory, my opinion. With more than 2 billion people on the planet, with a Facebook account and more than 1 billion without a formal type of digital identity, Facebook will be the established platform that will give people identities through different means of accessing data online. That's buying, banking, social media, researching. And of course, most of us use our fingerprint, a password or an iris in order to activate um, the different programs. So passwords will soon be a thing of the past, forcing people to use a digital identity, making them trackable. Gruner, she works with, um, with a company founded by Bill Gates, believes there could one day be some version of digital identity through social media, but they don't know what it is yet. Dakota Gruner, executive director, works with Gavi, Gavi is an organization founded by Bill Gates and others in the year 2000 to bring underused vaccines to some of the most vulnerable people on earth. What I did, the next paragraph, it was further down in what I was reading, but I put it together because the same words were used and therefore, as far as I'm concerned, they're linked. Gruner says, we are planning a new model to digital identity, relevant for those who are most vulnerable and those in the developed world. You see the connection between um, what I just said before, Dakota Gruner works with Gavi to bring underused vaccines to some of the most vulnerable people on earth. And then later on in that text, but which I've moved up, she says, relevant. We're planning a new model of digital identity relevant to those who are most vulnerable and those in the developed world. So um, fingerprint access, that's a form of digital identity. So ID2020 has teamed up with private companies such as Accenture, a possible framework for its wider unique identity service platform, a biometric system that can manage data on fingerprints and irises. There are more than 1 billion people across the globe who have no form of identity and this is a massive problem. Why would it be a massive problem? 1 billion people without an identity, what is it of your business? Why should you be concerned about people outside your country who do not have an identity? Why? It's only one reason. They don't want anyone to slip through the net. They don't want anybody to be able to tell the tale. So, Gruner plans to use technology to give 1.1 billion people on the planet a digital identity. So, they're looking to get that 1.1 billion through some kind of technology. I have no idea what it is, but that is the plan. So while working as an aide de camp to Gavi's CEO, to Gavi's CEO Gruner traveled to Cameroon in 2014 for the launch of the National Rotavirus Vaccination Program. So those, for those of you who do not know what the rotavirus is, rotavirus is 
Well, children can catch a rotavirus infection if they put their fingers in their mouth after touching something that has been contaminated by the stool of an infected person. I'm not quite sure how that can happen, but you never know. If somebody's gone to the toilet and they haven't washed their hands and there's a bit of shit on their fingers and then they go and pick up their kid, they're more likely to get rotavirus. That's putting it crudely. Usually this happens when children forget to wash their hands often enough, especially before eating and after using the toilet. So they're saying that's children doing it, but it could just as well be adults. Rotavirus can be very harmful, causing diarrhea, vomiting and fever and can cause loss of body fluids. This leads to dehydration, which can be very dangerous, especially for babies and young children. Some children need an IV needle in their vein in the hospital to replace lost fluids. Gabby spends two billion a year on vaccines on behalf of 60% of children in the world. So this Gabby company is massive. So how does ID2020 plan to use its technology to give these digit to give these people digital identities? Well, one of the solutions may lie in blockchain and the distributed Ledger technology, taking the financial world along with nearly every major industry by a storm. So I'm not quite sure how we all factor in that, but I'm sure we'll know soon enough. As a participant of the recent Accenture Blockchain for Good Hackathon, ID2020 has an interest in the technology that would provide a traceable digital identity which, in theory, cannot be edited by third parties. Despite its name suggesting a framework for something in the immediate future, ID2020 is working toward achieving target 16.9 of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network to provide legal identity for everyone, including free birth registrations by 2030. So now we know why the Home Office has gone digital. By the end of the decade, its goal is to work on the technologies for digital identity and with governments in particular, some of them have already have expressed an interest. Through Gavi, the organisation is working with Malawi to help give children an identity through vaccination distribution, leading to an eventual system where everyone over the age of 16 in that country would have a national ID card. So they're trading vaccinations for national ID cards. What can't you do without? What might you have to trade? Because that's what it's going to be when the shit hits the fan. They're going to look at something that we cannot do without, that something we have grown accustomed to. And then that is what we're going to have to trade for the vaccination in some form, shape or form. That's just my opinion. So what we've set for 2020 is proof of concept at real scale rather than just a few dozen people, Bruna said. So this is how the coronavirus, ID2020 and medical martial law are intertwined. I hope it's somehow you can get that. Trump's announcement that there is a greater role for the military is all part of rounding everyone up and social distancing. Those who don't follow the herd will, be, will feel the wrath of the narcissistic leaders. Trump intends that the military rather than public health authorities be put in charge. Public health authorities do do not have the power to force, arrest or detain, but the military does. Has the virus been used to capitalise on control and to indoctrinate us? Will those who refuse the vaccine be quarantined against their will? You tell me. Allegedly, Baxter Company shipped out live bird flu mixed in with regular flu for the flu shots. And they're talking about all these people died of the flu. How do we know? It's not because of a combination of that bird flu with the in, inside mixed with the flu shots. We don't know. It's all hush hush. Anyway, vaccine manufacturers have indemnity against claims from people who claim to be adversely affected by the vaccine. So are they the cause of the problem or the solution? And that's all I've got to say.
I'll leave your comments. You can leave your comments down below. You'll probably say she's a mad woman. But hey, I saw it go. Bye bye.